with our second show tonight, and we are talking tools for your business. And we have Jared Wade here. Good evening, Jared. Good evening, John. How are you doing, buddy? Doing well, doing well. Uh, we got to apologize. We're a couple of minutes late because Jared started talking about some of the things he's covering tonight, and it's like, ooh, that's cool. Ooh, that's really cool. And then uh, I kind of got lost. <laughs> It's okay. It's it's good to get excited about stuff and then kind of lose track of time. It, there's there's nothing wrong with that. It, and that that happens especially when when so many of our businesses now are revolving around everything internet. So when you see a cool tool presented, mm -hmm. and it's like in the old days when the you know the first pneumatic hammer when they showed it's like ooh that that could drive nails a lot faster. Yeah, boom. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but now we have technology, we have so we don't even have to like drive nails to begin with. We just <laughs> we program something else to drive the nails for us. Yeah, that, right? that's, that's, that's what, how it works. That's what right? it should be. I'm hoping. <laughs> that's, that's what my boys think. <laughs> Come on, we got to go out there and get that fixed. Well, can't we just like 3D print something? No. Oh my gosh, Brian Harris. Brian Harris is getting a a cover made, and he's getting it 3D printed. I am very excited about seeing how that turns out for him. A cover. Yeah, he he's modified his like he's got a he he got a case and a uh, what is it a Pioneer DDJ oh, okay. SX2 and then he's using one of those three XLR lifesaver micro mini channels mm -hmm. to go in because there's only there's only one dedicated uh, mic jack for the SX2. Yeah, I use the same the same controller. Uh, but anyways, he 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 built or he's getting built a cover to go on the top of that because it's going to sit on his slider. Uh, drawer for his laptop so it's going to cover up all of his cables but it's being custom 3d printed so cool brian harris i want to see photos and videos of this thing when you get it done because it looks ridiculously awesome nice yeah i didn't see that i'll have to check that post out yeah so where where, where are we going to start where are we going to what are we going to hit tonight Okay, so during the mini sessions, I talked about all kinds of different social media outlets, Facebook and Instagram and, uh, you know, Twitter and everything else in between. But at the very end, I talked very briefly about three additional services that I really think any business, whether you're a DJ, whether you're a photographer, whether if you're in the wedding industry, if you're not in the wedding industry, it doesn't matter. Uh, these applications and these apps and these services can benefit anybody uh, that is trying to basically streamline how they run their business and, and how they do things from A to Z. So tonight, I thought it would be fun to talk about those three. So we're going to talk about cool. a service called Later. We're going to talk about a service called uh, Slack. And we're going to talk about a service called IFTTT, which is If This Then That. So... Are you ready? I am ready. I am ready. I played with I played with a couple of those and looked at them, and then of course the one Slack was completely new to me. So this is gonna be fun. Slack is Slack is good. Slack is a lot of fun. So um, if you're watching on YouTube, and I hope everybody is, uh, you're participating in the chat. Um, I don't have that chat pulled up in front of me. So what I want you to do is I still encourage you to comment, uh, talk amongst yourself, all that fun stuff. But I'm going to go through these three services. And then at the tail end of tonight is when I'm going to we're going to go back through and maybe uh, answer some questions. So John, maybe if you can I'll play. Pull yep, there you go. That I'll sounds perfect. So uh, I'm going to switch screens. And I'm going to pop it to full screen so then it will be easier for them to see everything. Boom. Nice. Works for me. All right. So as you know, let me move me and John out of the way here. Um, I'm going to show you how to set it up uh, on the desktop version. I'm just using Chrome on a PC. And then I've also got my tablet uh, to the side. And I'll kind of show you what they look like in, uh, in the mobile version as well. There's not a lot of difference between them. But I figure, hey, we'll go through these one at a time and, and show you how the pro whole process goes. So this first service is called Later. Now, the one thing that a lot of people love to do is schedule their posts. They love to schedule Facebook posts. They love to schedule really anything possible social media wise. And that's, that's where a lot of services like Hootsuite came along, uh, services that allow you to, uh, to, to initialize or, or, or to post on your behalf. So basically, it's a, it's a third-party posting system. Uh -huh. um, the downfall with services like Hootsuite are because they're third-party, the, the core social media sites like Facebook and Instagram and Twitter and all that, they ding you pretty heavy for using a third-party service. So if you're used to re getting like an outreach or uh, of like, you know, 
500 to a thousand people or whatever, or if you're, if you're, if you're Ben Stowe, 27,000 or whatever people <laughs> see all of your posts. Um, what'll happen is if, if he was to use Hootsuite, Facebook instantly says, Nope, you're not, you're not using our service. We're not going to post it for you. So what later does is later is a service specifically that works with Instagram. And what you can do is you can schedule your posts and then assign it times. And then on the mobile version, when you have it on your phone, what it does is it pops up reminders and it pops up all the information that you've put in there. So you post it on your own. Granted, it kind of stinks because it's an extra step, but what, what it makes it, uh, wait, what it makes it possible for is that it comes straight from your Instagram. So you don't get dinged for anything. For sure. So uh, later, super simple, super simple. Later.com is where you're going to go to. There are pricing options. All three services that I'm going to talk about tonight, I use the free services and they work perfectly fine for me. So just to kind of give you a heads up, if you want to get really cool and you want to go, you know, all out and do a paid service, I'm sure you're going to get extra benefits, but I'm just going to talk about the free services tonight. So um, super simple. You're going to log up or log in, uh, sign up, whatever it might be. You're going to create your email and your password. Oh, that's right. I changed this. And there we go. So it, it lays it out like a big old calendar. Yeah. Uh, and all you have to do is assign where you want posts to go. So as you can see, on like today and tomorrow. I normally try to do an Instagram post at eight o'clock in the morning. Since I do game shows, I have a little calendar, like a, a, a page a day calendar here that is family feud. Okay. So uh, throughout, let's see if I can find a picture here to show you. There you go. So back on January Thursday, or Thursday, January 26th, this was the family feud. Name something that might be painful to do right after you have, you have a facelift. Top five answers are on the board. I throw it on Instagram. And basically what I tell people to do is feel free to comment here or I'm going to post the official answers, which are on the backside of this on my Facebook. So what I'm doing is I'm drawing them to my Facebook page through my Instagram account. Yeah, good that's, idea. That's super, super key to do. Mm -hmm. So doing this at eight o'clock every morning, it gets tremendous response on Instagram as well as on Facebook. But all you have to do is, let's see here. Let me get my big ugly face. All you have to do is, let's see here. Tomorrow at 11 a.m., I want my beautiful face to go up. Now, here's where I can write my caption. I can write whatever I want, blah, blah, blah. I'm talking with John Young. Other stuff. There you go. Uh -huh. So what it'll do is once I assign at the time, 11 a.m. on the 9th of February, I can put in hashtags in there if I want. I can do all kinds of other things. It's actually got a, a cool new thing now where you can actually save your captions. So if you've got a post that you want to, you want to, promote over and over and over again and use the same hashtags and use the same same exact verbiage, that's the way that you want to do it. You can just save your caption right there. And then when you put in additional ones, it'll have them automatically saved for you. But you click save. It takes that photo, puts it in that time slot, and you are good to go. So tomorrow at 11 a.m., I'm going to get a reminder on my phone a little pop-up is gonna pop up on my phone and say, hey, you've got a, a photo that you need to post to Instagram. You open that up and what'll happen is you just click okay and it will automatically copy the text that you just put in your comment field and then it will download the photo that you've got in here to your phone and then re-upload it to Instagram automatically. The whole process takes about seven seconds in all honesty. And then you can post it straight from your Instagram. So eight o'clock in the or eight, eight, uh, eleven o'clock in the morning, I'm gonna get an, I'm gonna get a notification by eleven o eleven o'clock in thirty seconds. I'm gonna have a, a pretty detailed Instagram post that I want to go out ready to roll and ready to fly. So Jared, does that propagate then the photo propagates into the Instagram and the text also is propagated into the app? So all you have to do is look at it and say yep and click set post. That's 
that's exactly what happens. Very nice. You, you're doing all of the work on this front end. If you want to change it beforehand, you can change it. If you want to add a hashtag, if you forgot that you wanted to put something in there, and you just want to make sure that it's there, as long as you go back into your, your systems or your settings, you're solid, you're good. So as soon as that, that pops up on your phone, and I should have probably scheduled one, that would have been really intelligent of me to do that so I could actually show you guys what it looks like right now. But when you get into the mobile app side of it, um, it's literally uh, three screens. The first screen says, hey, this is the picture that you want to post. Here's the, here's the, uh, the comments that you, that you wrote down. Do you want to post this? And you click OK or yes, and then it copies the photo or copies the comments, all the verbiage, and then uh, it automatically transfers that photo over to Instagram. It opens up Instagram automatically, and you, uh, well, for Android, you click and hold. I think for Apple as well, you click and hold or push and hold, mm -hmm. and then a little paste comes up. You hit paste, and then all your verbiage just shows up right then and there. So. Nice. The only the only catch that you have to play with, and this isn't this isn't later's fault, this is more Instagram's fault, is you have Instagram. Uh, oh, I want to say about a year ago started allowing you to have multiple accounts on Instagram. You could have a work and a personal, and you know, a one for your cat and one for your hamster, and you know, one for Ben Stowe's backpack or whatever else. I'm gonna see how many times I can use the phrase Ben Stowe yeah. in this in this. <laughs> Episode one, uh, the the social menace. So uh, what what you what what unfortunately what you have to do before you really go into later is I normally open up my Instagram real quick and just make sure that my business profile is selected before I go into later. That way, when it transfers over, I don't have to worry about it being on my personal account. And normally, it does a pretty good job, but just for the sake of making sure that there's no major issues that's the way that i go about it yeah i've had that instance where it's all of a sudden oh look at it, it's on my personal account yay mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah it drives me bonkers now mm -hmm. saying all of that <clears throat> there is a small catch with the free account and you could probably tell if you could see right up here it looks like it can only post about a few days out well, you can, po you, you can post Schedule. a certain amount of times. So like I've got all of these photos ready to go. I'm pointing at my screen like you guys can see it. I have all of, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right there. Yep, yeah, right there. Can't you guys see exactly what I'm posting at? Um, you can see I've got uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. I've got about 16 posts ready to go. And I've got 24 posts left for the month. It, it restricts you as to how many posts you can make using the free service, which isn't that big of a deal to me because I normally do my 8 a.m. one and then maybe one more uh, per day or one every other day. And that's about it. The rest of the time, because the, the important thing that you want to make sure about your, your social media, specifically your Instagram, is it, it really needs to be an insight into what goes on in your normal business activities. Instagram draws in um, a lot of people that kind of want to see behind the scenes type stuff. Facebook doesn't necessarily do that. Instagram um, just for some reason pulls in that type of a crowd. It's like the adult version of, of Snapchat. Mm. That's, what, that's what most people go to Instagram for. So with this free version of later, you're restricted to 24 posts and that's it. Or I'm sorry, you're restricted to I think like 38 or 42, somewhere in that range. I forget exactly how many free posts you get, but that's what you, uh, that's what you got. So, and that's still for most people, that's quite a bit in the course of a month. Oh yeah. Yeah. You know, for guys that, that rarely post ever, like ever, ever, ever at all. Um, it is, it's, it's a, it's, it's wonderful because I can, I can sit here in my office and take photos of those family feud calendars and then program it for the next two weeks. And I know, well, it might be kind of repetitive, but then that also forces me like, like, as you can see right now, this little phone that's up, there's several pictures that are of that family feud, those different days on there. And then there's other pictures that I have other things. It kind of forces me to use Pinterest or not Pinterest, use Instagram a little bit more. 
Um, so it breaks up the rigmarole of seeing the same thing over and over and over again. So um, FYI, here's a little promotion that I'm doing and anybody can steal it if they want to. Uh, February is uh, the big month when everybody gets their Girl Scout cookies. So I bought up a whole bunch of Girl Scout cookies and whenever somebody books with me, uh, they get a free box of uh, Girl Scout cookies. Nice. Because I'm, I'm, uh, I'm not too far above bribing people with <laughs> delicious <laughs> cookies <laughs> from the Girl Scouts. <laughs> oh. So, so anyway, there you go. So I've got those. I've taken pictures of the Girl Scout cookies boxes and whatnot, and all kinds of different things. So, um. It does have the features that you can, if you use Google Drive, I, use, I live on Google Drive, I live on Google. Um, if you have photos that are in your Drive folders, it'll import them in. If you've got them in Dropbox, uh, I know Dave Turner uses Dropbox like crazy. He is, you yes. Know, if, if he's got a whole bunch of photos in there and he just wants to pull them, he can do that straight, straight to here and then schedule when, um, when he wants to have them go out. Uh, a little tip for Instagram users, the, the peak times that a lot of people use Instagram are of course in the evenings. So uh, somewhere in the four o'clock range and also on the weekends. Um, early morning to noontime doesn't really pull a whole lot of people into Instagram according to, to the statistics. Sure. So there you go. So video, that, yeah. Can this do a video post? Can this do a video post? Uh huh. Uh, to my knowledge, no. It's okay. only for photos, because and and it makes sense is because it, you it's going to re-download it into your phone before it posts into Instagram. So if it does videos, it's going to take up a whole heck of a lot of uh, bandwidth. That's that was my thought too. But uh, for photos, uh, yeah. Quick and um, easy. So for pricing, if you want to get into pricing, it starts as low as zero, goes up to $50 a month. Um, it looks like when you go to the, the premium, you can do videos. Oh, yeah. Look at that. So I'm going to correct myself right now. Like I said, I've only been using the free version. Um, but if you want to pay 9 bucks a month, if you want to pay $10 a month, uh, you can get 100 Instagram posts per month, unlimited tw Twitter posts. They've introduced Twitter. I didn't even know that. I haven't even looked at that. Wow, that's incredible. Um, you still are limited to one Instagram profile or and one Twitter profile, uh, but you can do videos. So if you want to do videos for, you know, if you want to, if nine bucks a month is worth it to you, I would say go for it. I mean, to me, it sounds like it'd be worth it if you've got a lot of good videos. For sure. And, and again, you, things like this, you buy, you, you do it, you buy a year in advance and you know, you're seven and a half dollars a month. Just the convenience of being able to hit two social media platforms, Instagram and Facebook on a regular basis and Twitter, mm -hmm. you know, that's a, um, a great tool because as you started out with, Facebook likes things coming from Instagram. Yes. It plays incredibly well with those. Yep. Yep. If, if you use third-party services, if you try to work it around, and, and the next service I'm getting ready to show you, if this, then that, is, is technically a third-party service, um, but it, it, has, it has some really great features that work out really well. But to go along with what you're saying, John, for, for you know, $7.50 a month, if you do it yearly, it's, I mean, it, this, this one alone, later alone, 100 Instagram posts per month, that's three posts per day yeah. um, for a full month. You could plan it out a week in advance. I, I mean, the time that you're going to save is just ridiculous to, to stay in front of people. Yes. And that's the key thing with, with social media is you just need to make sure that you stay out there uh, in front of them. So now that I know that they do videos, I'm kind of tempted just to <laughs> give it a try. Uh, yeah, I'm going to start up a GoFundMe account and I'm going to see if I can raise enough funds for nine dollars a month no that's, <laughs> that's not going to happen um so yeah all right so we talked about later we'll get to questions about that in a little bit later if you will uh the second service that we're going to talk about is a service called ifttt.com i uh, if this then that now what if this then that does is it is a service that creates what it calls recipes and these recipes are Re I mean, they're just <clears throat> some amazing things. If you've never used if this, then that, 
I encourage you, if nothing else, just to go look at all the different recipes they've got. Because what they've done is, is, is they basically connect different web services and they have trigger points. So as an example, John, here's a great one for you. Uh, you can connect your YouTube channel with your Facebook page. <clears throat> so basically, uh, it automatically shares your YouTube video uploads to a Facebook page. So if you upload something, it's going to automatically do it. It's going to be a trigger. So if you upload a video to YouTube, then it's going to post a, uh, a, a post to your Facebook page. Um, let's see here. For those that still use Twitter, automatically saves every tweet you post to a Google spreadsheet. It sounds silly what some of this stuff is, but when you're trying to keep track of certain things, it's really, really amazing. I'll show you uh, some of what I do. I only have a few set up right now. Do, 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 do. And you said this was also a free, there's a free option to this. Uh, there, there's only a free option to this. Oh, really? I, I thought they had a paid version too. Yep. Uh, nope. I'll be done. Nope. If they do, I don't know about it. Yeah. So let's see here. <clears throat> so here's a simple one. Uh, I've connected my cell phone number with the web service Weather Underground. And I've got a, a recipe that says, if tomorrow's forecast calls for rain, then send a text message to my cell phone. That's it. That's all it does, but I don't have to worry about if it's going to rain or not tomorrow because I'm always going to get a text message. When you get into outdoor weddings and wedding season and you want to stay on top of stuff, you could search for Weather Channel, like, let's see here, uh, weather, if I go to search, that would be helpful, weather underground. And just as, just a few examples here, um, Let's see here. You can get the weather forecast every day at 7 a.m. from Weather Underground. It'll send you a notification on your phone or an email if you want to. Uh, you can connect this with your Alexa. So if you have certain things that you want Alexa to do, you know, Alexa, add a, an event tomorrow on my Google Calendar. You can connect it with your Google Calendar. It's, it's simply crazy what, what all you could do with it. So let me show you another one. Uh, that I use to kind of connect some of my other social media outlets. Um, ba, 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 ba. If anybody, I don't really have Twitter on my phone. Um, I don't use it that often. So if anybody ever tweets and then they put my hashtag Jared Wade Entertainment in there, it sends me a text message and says, hey, you've got a new tweet that somebody used your hashtag. Okay. So if you wanted to create uh, in that same fashion, you know what, let's just create one. Let's just do that. Yeah, I was just <laughs> going to say, if you could walk, walk through how one is created. Oh, yeah. That's going to be fun. All right. So if this, then that. So if this, let's figure out a good. These are the different areas that they've connected with so far. And I'm scrolling pretty slow because I want people to be able to see it. But they've done a great job uh, working in applications from... Uh, the Apple side, from Android side, from, I mean, there's one from NPR. Um, the only, the only semi-catch that you have to have is you have to have an account with whatever service you're going to use. Okay. So, so if you want it to post to a Facebook account, you have to have access to that Facebook account. Does this use API? Uh, I don't believe so. Okay. I don't believe so. Fiverr, great service. Love Fiverr. All right, so... Let me just grab one here. Where's my Instagram? Let's look up Instagram because that's always a good one. You can do all kinds of fun stuff with that. Instagram. So here's the, here's the options that we have for Instagram. Uh, any new photo by me. So anytime that I post a photo, something will happen. Um, any new video by me, if whenever I post a video, that's going to happen. Uh, a new photo by you in a certain area. So it's gonna take into account a specific area that you designate, which would be great for like weddings if you're gonna be at a venue and somebody's posting a lot of pictures in that specific area. Um, I use this one like crazy. A new photo or a new video by you, so by me, with a specific hashtag. Okay. So let's say that I'm going to do the new video with a spe specific hashtag. And that hashtag is gonna be DJ in TV. 
whenever I use the hashtag DJNTV, then that is going to happen. Um, and let's say that I want, anytime that I post with that, I want to send it to, what do I want to do? I want to send it to my Google Drive. Okay. So, depending on the file size, I could save it. So it saves directly to my Google Drive folder. Um, and then the rest of these are all documents, so they're not going to work. So we're going to do this upload file from URL. So <clears throat> the, uh, the file source, if you want to use a specific caption or URL or whatever else, the main thing that, that we're focusing on now is that hashtag. Okay. Uh, and then the caption is going to be whatever I put in there. Uh, and then it's going to go into this drive folder path. IFTTT slash Instagram on my Google Drive. You click create action, and then that's it. As long as if this, then that is still connected to my drive and my Instagram, anytime that I post to Instagram and use the hashtag, or I post a video and I have the hashtag DJNTV, then it's going to save a copy of that video to my Google Drive folder every single time we'll do another very one. nice very nice let's do a we'll do an easy one if you are on twitter let's see here um a, let me do a tweet uh here we go a new mention of me so if anybody mentions mentions me and it's not just me mentioning me it's anybody that mentions me then um i want to set up an auto response in twitter i'm going to well, you could you could do a retweet. I basically with that, with that system, you should be able to do that, correct? Yep, you could post a tweet. Yep. Yep, and then you can designate because the with a the recipe, then you add your ingredients. So you could say like right here has already got this pre-made. Thanks for the mention, whoever that was that used my username, and then what the, their text was, and then you could add more. You could add a link to the tweet. Oh, cool. So then, boom, it, it goes right back to their tweet. And then it just keeps that circulation happening over and over and over and over. Can you set a time, a time, uh, say, say it would be delayed by an hour? Uh, a time like when something happens. So say, so they mention you in a tweet. Okay. And is there a way to drop in that delay so you could delay it for an hour and then do that, that action to it? If oh, then, so it's, do that so later. So it's not instantly? Yeah. I don't remember um, if I've seen that in that. Um, in this, I don't think so. Uh, I think what you could do, though, is you could set up two recipes. The first recipe basically saying, hey, okay, Twitter, if somebody posts with my name on it, what I want you to do is I want you to throw it in a Google spreadsheet. And then, like, that's this, and then that's that. Yep. And then as a separate recipe, you could say, I want you to post, uh, you could, I want you to post, um, uh, a certain line from a spreadsheet back onto my Twitter. In my honest opinion, I don't think scheduling it like that would work all that well. Yeah. I think if you, if you wanted to like just keep track of the people that did tweet about you or the people that did, you know, uh, comment on one of your Instagram posts, save those into like a, a spreadsheet or an Excel file and then go back and revisit it once again down the road. Um, so sit down and then pull those back up and then go about it in that fashion. That way you can, uh, you can approach it however you want. Uh, or what you could do is you could work that together with later and then use later to schedule tweets to, that go back out. Right. So you could, you could save the names coming from twi Twitter into your Google Drive or wherever you want it to go to. You could have them S, you know, text message to you. Hey, these are the people that are talking about you. And then jump into your later account and then say, hey, at 7 o'clock tonight, I want you to send out, I want to send out a tweet that says, hey, thanks for following me at John Young and at Jared D. Wade and at you know, Jim Cerrone and whoever else is out there on Twitter. You know, I appreciate it instead of just bogging down Twitter with a whole bunch of repetitive you know, uh, nonsense is maybe is the best word to use for it. Yeah, I think that's a good way to describe it. Uh, <laughs> uh, you could you could just say, hey, you know what? 
before I, I go to dinner, I'm going to just send a quick tweet to thank everybody that tweeted about me today or whatever else and make that your, 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 your tweet for the day or whatnot. But there's a lot. There's, I want to say that I, I barely use. Oh yeah. There's so much in these. 5%. I mean, you know, I haven't connected my YouTube channel. That's a fail on me. I need to connect my YouTube channel. Uh, but there's Dropbox. There's I, I Google Calendar. Love Google Calendar. Great things. And the other cool thing is there are always new ones being made by other users. So I like to just jump on here every once in a while. Sure. And see what other users are creating. Seeing what, you know, different things uh, are happening. Um, um, one of my favorite ones that I like to do, here's a little secret. I can't believe I'm going to give this away, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give it away, is you can create a recipe that will download every photo that is posted to Instagram with a specific hashtag. Now, it doesn't sound like it's really phenomenal or over-the-top amazing, but what I do is for a wedding – or for a special event and they're using a hashtag, I will use that hashtag as the trigger. So I'll start downloading all of the Instagram pictures and then spend, oh my gosh, um, how much do they cost? Like I think 10 bucks or something like that to get a, a custom made poster. And I put all of those Instagram pictures in that poster. Oh, nice. So, you know, it's, is it, is it a high end photo booth? No. Is it something that, you know, they'll hang on to for a while and, and, and maybe think it's really cool because it's an Instagram thing and, you know, they could have hundreds of pictures or they could have 10, you know, it's still going to look cool on their wall or whatever else. So it, and it, it cost me nothing but three minutes to set up the recipe, order it online and then get it to them. And it's something that, that they've got. And I normally take some stupid photo of me and hashtag it with their hashtag. <laughs> so they know exactly who it came from. Oh, fun. So that is, if this, then that, um, I, I wholeheartedly like it. Um, as I was saying before, as I was saying before, this would be considered a, like a third party service. So I try to not use it for like automatic reposts. Right. So if you post something on Facebook, send the same post to Twitter and LinkedIn and my WordPress site and everything else. That's, that's not really what I use this for. This is more for, I want to, I want to do something very, very specific. When somebody checks in someplace on Instagram, I want to be able to have a quick you know, tweet of, Hey, welcome. You know, I hope you have a good time tonight type of a thing. Sure. All right. Now for the big one, the final one, this is the one, this is the one that caused us to start late tonight. <laughs> yes, it did. <laughs> That's exactly what this is. So this is Slack and I love Slack and a lot of people have no idea what Slack is. So I'm going to tell you what Slack is. Slack is going to change the way groups of people work together, and they already have. Um, basically, what Slack is, is it's a communication service, and it's a communication tool that allows you to set up a team and then invite team members into it, and then inside of it, you get to allocate and designate channels and where those team members go into specific channels. Now, if I was going to go through every nitty gritty little detail about how to set this up, it would take probably two more shows. Mm. So what we're going to do though tonight, because I think we have enough time, right? Yeah, yeah, we've got a little bit of time. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Um, we're going to set up a Slack account for John and Disc Jockey News. So um, there are pricing options. We'll start with that because I know everybody kind of looks for that. Uh, Slack for teams, you can get going at about seven bucks per person that wants to use it. Um, I use the free version. I've got, oh, how many different groups do I have? I think I'm in seven different Slack groups and they're all the free group. Um, so I'm not, I'm not too worried about it. But you can look through the different details of um, if you need access a certain way or not. But <clears throat> For me, the free version works perfectly fine. So let's see here. Oh, is it going to let me do it? Is it going to let me do it? Is it going to make me? There we go. We'll create a new team. All right. So your email address. 
John, I'm going to put my email on here, but I'm going to add you later. Okay. So that way I know that you don't boot me out because I know you like to boot me out. So what it's going to do is it's going to send a, a quick six digit confirmation code to your email. Uh huh. I probably need to do that. All right. Let me get my phone. There's my six digit confirmation. Enter in my credentials. And you can choose whatever username you want. They just don't allow spaces. So if you want to do uh, any type of a space, you're going to have to use a hyphen or an underscore. Continue to password. We'll do something super easy. And then what is this going to be used for? This is going to be used for a shared interest group. How big is your shared interest group? Well, John's got about 75 people that work for him. So we're going to go 50 to 99. Most people don't know that. Just Jackie News is going to be the group name. And hey, it's available. Nobody else has disjockeynews.slack.com. <laughs> it's phenomenal. <clears throat> so once we've got that, we're going to hit create team. It's going to do a little brain work. And then this is where you can send invites to other people that you want to send invites to. You're going to be able to do this later on as well, but right. we'll go ahead and send one to John. Is it John at distrackingnews.com? Oh, you got a K in there. Well, that's how we spell in Indiana. So <laughs> distrackingnews.com. Send the invitation. John will get an email. He basically, there's one button that you can click and then you jump right into it. It's setting up all of the cool stuff in here. I'm going to skip past a lot of this stuff. That way we don't have to uh, go through it. But now we're in our Slack group. So over here on the right-hand side, you have your channels. You have your direct messages. And then John will pop up here in direct messages here shortly if he signs up while I'm talking about it. But channels, you can create channels for anything that you want. It comes preloaded with a random and a general cha uh, channel. In my opinion, I think it's the same exact thing, random and general. You know, it's, it's, it's you know, useless information. But this is where you can also create new channels. So you click on create new channel. You can make it a public or private. So if you only want you know, special people in there. You only click uh, private. If you, if it's open up to the entire team, you can do whatever you want to. Um, and then you're going to give it a name. So let's just say that, that John is going to create um, a different channel for each one of the shows that he's got. So uh, you, Tuesdays with Ben Stowe, right? Yep. And then purpose, Ben Stow is the man, because he is. Uh, and then you can send invites if you want to. Create the channel. This is a public channel. Oh, I always forget. It has to be lowercase. I do that every single time. And stuff. Create channel. There we go. And then hope that uh, channel will be right over here. You can make it shorter if you want to. You can change the name of it if you want to at some point in time. But anything that goes on in this chat room, so uh, if he invites Ben to his team, just jockeynews.slack.com, he'll be able to get in there and chat back and forth, maybe talk about what is going on uh, for next week. Um, you know, send them a photo of the new backpack, uh, you know, see what kind of new graphics that Jimmy De Palma has created and he wants to get his okay on that. The important thing though, is it keeps everything in a centralized location. As much as I love Facebook Messenger and I love Instagram and being able to chat back and forth and seeing all kinds of different Messenger platforms. Oh, hey, look, there's John Young. There um, the, the important thing, and I think, John, are you in this group this Tuesdays with Ben Stowe? I uh, yes, I would be. All right, cool, I, cool. I think I, I'm. Let me just try to see here. Where I'm at. 
I don't want the Slack bot. So it works very similar to all of the other social media platforms where you start, if you want to mention somebody in specific, you click the and symbol, and then you can direct somebody. So if you want to say John, you could type in John, uh, you know, invite Ben. And then it's, it's all condensed in this one spot. So let's see here. Um, view channel details, member. I want to invite you. I want to get you in there. Yeah, I was going to say, I'm not in that group. Well, you should be in that group, John. You could also direct message people so you can talk back and forth on a private messenger. And it just, it works just like any other private messenger. Oh, sorry, I clicked away. Hey, look at that. He said hello. And he's even got a profile photo. Man, he's more with it than I am. I have nothing on there. <laughs> but he's on top of it. That's really, really good. Um, let's see here. Where is my... Okay, the truth be known, it pulled it from somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea where it pulled it from. <laughs> All right, so there's John. We're going to invite him. If you missed how I did that, there's a little link right here that says invite others to this channel. Or you can also add apps or custom integrations. We'll talk about that here in a moment as well. But, and now you can see down here, John Young has been added to this channel. So just as you want to make sure that if you, if people join, hey, he can type better than me because I, I can't spell at all. So, um, and then when you add additional groups for people that are already in there. So let's say, uh, socially mobile me create channel and we'll put john in there so now he's got a different channel for two of his shows that he has for just jockey news uh he's got socially mobile and then tuesdays with ben stowe and you can you can keep all of the conversation and all of the photos back and forth, all of the confirmations, any links shared back and forth uh, in these specific channels. So that way you don't have to be jumping all over the place. The mobile app is wonderful and it uses little to no battery power. That's one of the biggest things that I, I, I ding apps for is if they use too much battery power oh, yeah. and the Slack apps are wonderful. They use very, very little battery power every single time. So um, you can create as many channels as you want to. Uh, Slackbot is, is fun. You can just ask random questions. Uh, you saw a, a comment here a second ago about add an app or a custom integration. One of the, the cool things about Slack is it uses a, a slash code for a lot of their extra things. So let's see here. You could do slash, um, let's see here. Something silly like star or um, let's see, what is the, oh, wait, it's up here already. Oh, go away thing that pops up whenever I touch it. There we go. Um, like I like using them for polls, mm -hmm. like for a simple poll. Okay. And you can add it to your Slack group. Add to Slack. Here we go. Disc Jockey News. Authorize. And ta-da. So now when I do slash poll, It'll tell you exactly what you need to write. So uh, there should be the question in in uh, quotations. Mm -hmm. um, should we take questions now? And then you just follow it up with whatever you want the responses to be. Hit it. And then it creates a cool little poll. Oh, neat. Yep. And there is a, a, a so many different apps that you can add on to this. Um, if you're a gamer, um, there are people, and sound, it's going to sound really nerdy of me, but there are people that play like Dungeons and Dragons through Slack because it's got dice rolling applications. It's, <laughs> it's, it's ridiculously crazy, but um, it's super simple to, you know, figure out exactly how all of that works um, because it's a streamlined system. There isn't too much to kind of get you bogged down with. So um, 
with that, I'm going to jump over real quick to here. And this is my tablet. <clears throat> and these are the three apps that we just talked about later, Slack, and if this, then that. Uh, later in the mobile version looks very similar to the online version. You can go through, see what's been scheduled, uh, see what is what's going on. Do, 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 do. How, how, uh, how things are coming out. Um, the only thing that it doesn't do is I don't think it gives you your calendar view. Um, and the, the primary reason for that is they want you to do a lot of that planning on their website. Sure. Uh, if this, then that is the same exact way. It looks just like the website. Again, this is my tablet. This isn't my phone. So the phone's going to look a little bit different. Um, but you have access to all of your apps. You can change things around however you want, make modifications to all your recipes. It's fully integratable. Uh, and then Slack is probably the best looking one out of all of them. Oh. It's going to make me sign in. <laughs> well, I'm not going to sign in because it's, it's literally the exact same thing that we were just looking at just yeah. in a mobile, mobile platform. Nice. Um, and I love it. I love it so much. Um, I think it does a phenomenal job. Um, how do I get back? Over there? there we go. Um, it does a phenomenal job with really every, oh, there we go. Um, with every integration that, that Slack can do for your teams. I, I honestly wholeheartedly believe that mobile, mobile ops in the DJ world, I honestly think that mobile ops would be so much more on top of what they do. And I'm not slamming mobile apps by any means, but I think communication is, is gold when it comes to events and event planning. Oh, for sure. You have to have communication in every form and fashion. So if you've got a mobile, like Mike Walter, he's got, how many guys does he have working for oh, him now? Say, he has quite a team and you get a large multi-op like that having, having, uh, Exactly. Because there's times where you've got, he's got his MC and his DJ and then mm -hmm. his office person and then Mike himself all could have conversation about a specific wedding. So having that team together. Exactly. And that's another way that you could do channels. There would be a lot of channels. You could, I mean, do one for each individual specific one. But I mean, if you wanted to do, a, you know, a channel on training and a, and a channel on, um, you know, updated training information or, or uh, you know, calendar events or, or anything and everything just to kind of keep everything consolidated, Mike and his 425 guys that he has on his team, I think it's most, most of the, like, New Jersey, New York area works for Mike now in some form or fashion. That or at least they all show up when it comes to picture day and they're all lined up against the pier making it really cool. <laughs> <laughs> he just pulls everybody. He's like, what are you doing? Are you doing anything Do you look right good now? in a tux? Hey, come on over. Put that cotton candy down. Get over here. We're going to take a picture and then we're going to go run. Here we go. Um, so multi-ops, even single ops, because I'm a single op and I still use it. Uh, I've got so many brides that have seen slack and they're like why haven't we used this before and they're using it for their wedding planning because they can put all of their wedding professionals in that slack team and then divvy it up by channel and say oh this is entertainment this is photography this is videography and that's how they primarily communicate instead of via email because as we all know brides nowadays like instant communication and they don't like to check email Oh, they it, really it's, don't. It's it's incredible how, and I, we've had conversations about that on other shows. Is that you can see with tracking capability now that if they open that email and they don't. Nope, nope. They don't. They never. Uh, they do. I, I, I'm not going to say they never do, but most of the time, w when I introduce the option for brides or for any prospective client to text me on my website, hey, do you want me to text you, call you, or email you? 50% say text now. Yeah. They just want, they want that quick. Hey, are you available? Yes. Cool. What's the next step? You know, that's, that's how they work through it. So those are my three suggestions. I cool. encourage you guys to check them out. I don't know. Is there any questions that popped up? Um, I'm going to get back, back, back there. They've been kind of watching and, and listening and some of the stuff I was able to cover. Okay, cool. As we've been going on there. Some, yeah, a bunch of different apples. The, a lot of the, 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 if then, then that you guys just need to go out there and, and kind of just go, 
perusing through and there's so much information and so many uh, applets that other people have done that's that's a lot of questions of can you do this or can you do this or can you do this combination of things and it's and yeah you also need to experiment a little bit because there's times where it's like oh yeah i bet if i did this and did that and then did that and then this you can have this as uh, as jared was talking earlier this progression of moving content and information around and managing yep. it yep the one thing i will encourage as you go through if this then that is be very careful about the recipe structure because there's no safeguards in place so if you're not if you're not comfortable setting up some really intricate things it can backfire on you when i first started using it it happened to me where i set up a recipe that whenever something posted to instagram i think it was with a specific hashtag that i was using at the time i wanted that to be posted to my facebook page but then i also had a uh, recipe for Facebook that whenever that same uh, hashtag was used, it was going to go to my Twitter and the same one for my Twitter to my Instagram. And one night I was, I don't even remember what I was, I think I was at a party with my wife and my phone just started lighting up and I'm like, what the heck is going on? It got into this vicious circle that Instagram, oh, no. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and it just went on and on for a solid half an hour. And I had to go back through my social media and delete hundreds of yes. posts of the same thing that was just going over and over. So, you know, what I did was I, I streamlined it and I focused on a specific uh, social media that I knew I was going to use a lot. For me, that's Instagram and Facebook. And this was before uh, Facebook bought Instagram. So it was before all the integrations happened where you could post instantly to your page and whatnot from Instagram. Um, but I said, okay, those are my starting points. Yeah. This is where I'm going to base all of my recipes from and i haven't had to delete hundreds of posts since yes so there's always that positive side of the story i've, I've been there done that and it's like oh it seemed like such a good idea and then all of a sudden do, 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 oh no everybody has <sighs> good stuff jared uh people would like to get in touch what's the best way for them to get in contact with you to ask questions or what have you Sure. So you're always welcome to email me, jared at jaredwadeentertainment.com. Uh, I'm all over social media, so you can find me pretty much anywhere. Um, if you reach out to me through Facebook, you can find my business and then chat with me through the business side of that, Jared Wade Entertainment. Uh, if you want to call me and you want to just chit chat on the phone, text me. I'm totally cool with that as well. Uh, phone number is 317-414-6644. Uh, I will be at three conventions this year. I'm going to be at uh, ARMS DJs in okay. down in Tennessee. Uh, I'm going to be at uh, Wedding NBA. Uh, and then I'm going to be at uh, Midwest DJs Live. Oh, nice. You're coming this so, way. Yes, yes. I'll be heading up. It's actually only like a four-hour drive. Oh, really? I guess yeah. Yeah. Jeez, from indianapolis yeah you're closer than i am wow yeah yep so those are i think uh is is midwest the next one that's coming up out of those three um I think yes so. yes it's the first one of the mm -hmm. yep so i'll be at those three so pull you know say hi or or whatever else i mean hopefully if uh if john allows it and we continue to have more of these shows i can bring up some more cool stuff yeah. for you guys oh, to use and great stuff um, but, uh, feel free to email me, call me, text me. Uh, if there's something specific that you would like to see me talk about more, uh, if you want to, you know, if you have a specific social media outlet that you want to see me dive into a little bit deeper, if there are specific uh, applications, um, this, this show is, is really designed for not just DJs, but it's designed for anybody that has a business. And if you're in the wedding profession, you've got a business. If you're a DJ, you've got a business. Um, ways to make your lives a little bit easier by using this, which is what everybody, if you're in the, if you're a business owner right now, you have to use that right now. Yep. Um, or with a tablet of some kind. Um, I, I rarely even get my laptop out anymore because I use both of those in a Bluetooth keyboard and that's how I do uh, all of my, all of my work now, but uh, no, reach out to me. Let me know your questions. Uh, happy to answer them, uh, you know, back the way that you ask them or uh, integrate them into a show. That sounds great. That sounds great. 
Jared, thank you very much. We'll be back again next Wednesday night for the second show. So, guys, just keep watching the schedule. We'll get all that posted up as we get closer. So, Jared, have yourself a great evening, and we'll catch you next Wednesday. All right. Thanks, John. Thank you. Catch you guys later.